My name is Jolene, and I care for CMDA Student Ministries in Northern Ontario. The Northern Ontario School of Medicine has two campuses, one in Sudbury and one in Thunder Bay. I work at Health Sciences North as one of the hospital chaplains. It's a teaching hospital in Sudbury, Ontario. If you're going to be passing through uh, working or studying at HSN, please look me up in either the Spiritual and Religious Care Department or through CMBA. I would absolutely love to meet you. We have been living through some unprecedented times in healthcare as a result of COVID-19. It's shaken up how we live and it's deeply impacted our work. And the changes have not only been practical, we've had to reprioritize some of our ethical principles that guide our patient care. So over the past few months, I have been thinking a lot about key Christian values that are important to me and that I want to remain true to as I care for and advocate for the patients in my practice. One of those Christian values that keeps coming to the surface for me is the value of hospitality. For those last few months in the hospital, it has been so difficult for our patients as they quarantine. It means that they have been separated from loved ones. They are trying to um, find a human connection through PPE and plexiglass. That means that showing hospitality has been hard, but invaluable. I was inspired to dig deep into God's word, to learn more on the topic, to improve my hospitality as I care for patients. There's some great Bible passages about hospitality that transcend time and circumstances. And I spent some time thinking about Luke 14. In the account of Luke 14, Jesus and his disciples are invited to the home of a community leader and who is, has no intention of showing true hospitality. In fact, he wanted to trap Jesus. But Jesus took that pressure cooker situation as an opportunity to teach his followers about the true meaning and cost of hospitality. Here's 14, or Luke 14, verses 12 to 14. Jesus said to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they might invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So I took a few things from this passage that I want to share with you today. And first of all, is to whom do we show hospitality? Jesus challenges us not to offer hospitality just to our friends and our family and those we're comfortable with, or to show hospitality to people that have power or influence over us, or in our practices to show hospitality to those patients who are sweet and compliant and bring nurses cookies and write us good reviews. If those are the only people to whom we extend hospitality, the earthly rewards are all we will get. The transaction is complete. Jesus wanted us instead to prioritize the poor, lame, blind, crippled. And I bet you can already contextualize who Jesus is focused on in your practice today. The patients I think of are the most marginalized, the voiceless, the non-compliant, the addicted, and the socially complex patients and the ones who will not remember a single thing that you did for them the moment you leave. They are the ones that have no means of repaying your efforts. Many do not even have the energy or know how to return kindness for kindness. One of the great things about working in healthcare is that you don't have to spend much time or effort going out to find these vulnerable people. They come to you. And that means 
that we should have numerous opportunities in the day to have practiced the skill of hospitality. Which leads me to the ne my next thought. And now that we know um, who God has identified as the ones that we should ho show hospitality towards, what, what does hospitality look like? Now, in a healthcare setting, I am not saying to throw away safety or wisdom or best practice, not after the week that I've had in, a hospital, in the hospital, but hospitality is not as quaint as it sounds. Prioritizing the most vulnerable and challenging patients is both counterintuitive and can be countercultural in a healthcare setting. The way Jesus lived and taught his disciples was countercultural in his day, and it's still countercultural to this day. Hospitality and other values Jesus taught are spiritual disciplines. They don't come natural to many of us. And in many of Jesus' stories, even the most pious people of the time stopped and questioned him. Going the extra mile for the patient that causes everyone else grief is not going to win any popularity contests. There will be a spectrum of behaviors in ourselves and in others that we can expect to push up against if we're showing Christ-like hospitality. You may have to check your own attitudes and triggers when you come up, uh, when you meet that rude and and frustrating patient, you will have to daily resist the temptation to participate in what I call a minefield of aggressions and microaggressions that healthcare providers inflict on some of our most vulnerable patients. You may need to find the time and resources to advocate for clients in need when others think that this effort is pointless or a waste. How radical your hospitality is will, between, will be. It will be between you and God. But I believe that if you're doing hospitality the way it's described in Luke 14, you're going to be the target of criticism for your actions and you're going to receive no thanks for your hard work. Like the host that puts on a party and skips sending out invitations to friends and family and opens his homes to misfits and those that never get invited out, you're going to create waves. Which leads me to my third point that I want to talk about today, and that is the personal cost of living out Christ-like hospitality. Also, in the passage of Luke 14, there's two short parables. One of a builder who costs out a project before starting, and the other is of a king who measures out the risks of battle before going to war. When I was reading these verses, I was reminded of a term that we use in spiritual care often, and it's compassion fatigue. And for my purposes today, I'm changing it to hospitality fatigue. And this is when we become weary from the negativity and suffering of others. It starts to happen when we feel like the work that we're doing is not making a difference. Our empathy can turn to apathy and even bitterness and eventually learn, lead to burnout. The cost of discipleship is high. Jesus warns about it and ultimately his life reflected it. It's important to recognize that in order to prepare for the energy that it takes to live counterculture, cultural, and put your heart into thankless efforts, repeatedly, you'll need to have a plan for your own well-being. Here's a few side effects of hospitality fatigue. Starting to feel the hopelessness and powerlessness of your own patients. Feeling angry and irritable for no reason. Feeling less productive. You may even be, begin to feel numb to the pain and struggles around you. You can experience physical symptoms like exhaustion, headaches, aches and pains, and more. And you can also become very disillusioned 
about your own faith. These are all very normal reactions to hospitality or compassion fatigue. It's hard to imagine that these are the costs associated with hospitality, but they are. You must make a plan to rep replenish yourself spiritually, emotionally, and even physically. Working in a hospital, in an office, a clinic, on the mission field, or even being in the medical classroom. Here are some practice um, here are some things that you can work into a plan that can help you with your own personal care. One is talking through your frustrations with God in prayer. Two is remember that God sent his spirit to be our helper. We might feel like we're alone, but we're really not. Next is to spend time in God's word to reach out to spiritual mentors and friends, spend time in God's creation, get as much sleep as you can, eat well and hydrate. Pre-plan for what you need to be safe and well and recognize the tremendous energy it takes to care for society's most unwell. Over the past few months, Perhaps you've been evaluating your priorities and values as you've lived through COVID-19 and it's shaken up your world. Maybe you feel a little burnt out. If you need to talk to somebody about your feelings and your thoughts and your values and your faith, reach out to either myself or the student leader in your area. That's what we're here for. If you're spending some time at Health Science North in Sudbury, again, look me up in the Spiritual and Religious Care Department. Like I said earlier, I'd love to meet you. Thanks for taking the time to listen. It's been a real pleasure sharing my thoughts on hospitality and healthcare. Take care, be safe, many blessings.